Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy, and what I have for you here is an interesting little algebra word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and just read the problem. It says seven times the sum of three and a number is equal to that number plus one. What is the number? Now, as I indicated, uh, you will need to use some basic algebra to solve uh, this problem, but I really don't want to give you too many more hints because I want to give you a full opportunity for you to solve this all on your own. Now, if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm going to solve this uh, problem step by step. Also, if you need uh, math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the problem. Uh, if you want to pause the video and work on it for a little bit, that's certainly understandable. And feel free to use a calculator. But what is the number? What's the number that we're talking about? The number in question? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The number is negative 10 uh, thirds, right? So this is the correct answer. Now, if you came up with another answer, uh, you may need to check to see if it's uh, equivalent to negative 10 thirds, right? So you can kind of, you know, um, use a calculator or whatnot. But if you're like, oh, I came up with, you know, uh, a different uh, answer, but you're, you know, you feel absolutely certain that you got it right, you'll pretty much be able to determine whether, in fact, you got a uh, correct, the correct answer as you see me work the solution. But this is the right answer. And a matter of fact, if you got this answer, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you definitely know how to solve basic algebra word problems. They'll be very impressed with that. Matter of fact, they might even buy you like a pizza or take you out to lunch. Who knows? Okay. All right. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into this problem. And uh, again, you know, we are talking about an algebra word problem. So what is the first step in any algebra word problem or any math problem at that? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that you use what I call uh, the rule of three. Okay, and this is really important when it comes to solving word problems. And the rule of three, or at least I can, this is my rule, is read the problem at least three times before you start doing anything. Okay, so the first time when you read the problem, you just get a basic sense of what's going on, right? So read it, like, okay, I got my, you know, you know, bearings about the type of problem that I'm dealing with. The second time, Re, uh, you read the prompt, start pulling in more information, more details, right? Start thinking about, hmm, okay, how can I start, you know, uh, you know, think about ways that you could possibly solve it, right? So that's the like the second thing that may come to mind. And then a, th a third time, right, you're obviously pulling in more details, but you need to really focus in on what is the question. And the question here is what is the number? Okay, so we're looking to solve uh, for this unknown value and we're talking about some number. Now, in algebra, like when you're asked to solve for an unknown value, all right, we want to use a variable like x, y, z. So in algebra, we use variables, right? But what do these variables represent? They represent a number, okay? So here you can see in our um, problem, we have a number. These are numbers, okay? We don't know what specific number, but they represent a number. So we're going to be using a variable, and uh, because we're using or we're talking about a number, I'll choose to use the variable n to represent the number in question, okay? All right, so that's the first thing we need to do is to kind of establish uh, a variable, and then the second thing we need to do is to construct um, some sort of uh, mathematical equation, algebraic equation, so we can solve for this unknown value in this case, it's the number n. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about that right now. So here, this comes down to your ability to translate a verbal okay, sentence into an algebraic or variable sentence. And this is something that you study in like real basic algebra. Now, if you need help with this, if you're kind of struggling with translating words into variables, I'm going to strongly suggest that you check out like my pre-algebra course, all right? This is a critical skill. Matter of fact, you won't be able to solve, uh, you know, uh, algebra word problems without 
really learning how to translate. Okay, you got to be able to translate, and we're just going to have to take things one word at a time. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here we have seven times, okay? So we're multiplying. This is multiplication. Seven times what? Well, it's going to be seven times the sum. Now, anytime you hear or see the word the sum or difference, you need to think parentheses, okay? So the sum of something is uh, like the sum of two and five would be two plus three, but put that in parentheses. This is the sum of two, I'm sorry, the sum of two and three, we would write it this way, okay? Two plus three, yes, that's two, or we're saying here two plus three is just, you know, uh, uh, two plus three, as I just indicated. If I say the sum of two plus three, put those in grouping symbols. That's really important when you're translating. So seven times the sum of what? Three and a number, okay? So the sum of three and a number is this right here, okay? So three plus that number n, this is the sum of three and that number, and we're taking seven, and we're going to uh, multiply it, okay? So seven times the sum of three and, uh, uh, three and that number. So, uh, you know, when you write you know, when you're starting to write out your equation, just, you know, kind of look at it and, and ask yourself, you know, if, if I was to write a verbal phrase to describe what's going on here, would it be what I'm, you know, um, you know, back to my original, you know, paragraph, right? Or my original sentence. So I'm like, okay, this is the sum of three and a number. This is seven times the sum of three and a number. So, you know, double check your translations, but if you're satisfied, like, oh, I did it right, let's just continue to move forward. All right, so seven times the sum of three in a number is, now anytime you see the word is in an, uh, algebra, that's always is equal to, it's always the equal sign, okay? So seven times the sum of three in a number is, okay, there's our equal sign, or is equal to, that's kind of like really, you know, um, obvious <laughs> right here, right, is equal to. Sometimes you won't have equal, right? Sometimes you'll just have the word is. That's why I wanted to kind of stress that. But here it's really, you know, clear is equal to that number, the number in question, which is n plus 1, okay? So 7 times the sum of 3 and the number is equal to that number plus 1. So double check, triple check that, in fact, your uh, translation is correct. Now, once it's correct, you feel like, nope, it's good to go. The next uh, thing we want to focus in on is solving this equation. So let's go ahead and get into that right now because that's how we're going to figure out what n is equal to. All right, so how do we solve this equation for n? Well, the first thing we need to do is apply the distributive property. So that's going to be 7 times 3 is 21, and 7 times n is 7n. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to do. That's equal to uh, n plus 1. So when you're solving equations, right, uh, and you see a situation where you have to use the distributive property, i.e. a number outside of a sum or difference, this is almost like always the first step. Now, once we take care of this, we now need to focus on getting all of our variables on the left-hand side and all of our numbers on the right-hand side. Now, there's no combining like terms on either side, so we have 21 plus 7n is equal to n plus 1. So let's go ahead and start working uh, uh, the equation to get all of our variables to the left-hand side. Okay. So here, I have this n over here. I want to go ahead and move it to the left. So I'm going to subtract n from the right-hand side. So n minus n is 0, kind of basically gets rid of that. But whatever um, I do on the right-hand side, i got to do on the left-hand side. Remember, that is the golden rule of algebra. When you're solving equations, you can do pretty much anything you want as long as you do it equally to both sides of uh, the equal sign. Okay, It's very much like a balance scale, right? So you have something in balance, you can add or you know whatever weight or take off whatever weight you want on the scale as long as it's the same amount. Okay, it's not going to disrupt the balance equations work the same way. All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and subtract n from both sides of the equation. Now you're going to add down in a column manner. So 21 plus nothing is 21. 7n minus n is 6n and then n minus n is 0. We don't need to write that and then 1 plus uh, zero is just one. Now, 
the way I'm writing this equation, the format is the way I'm going to suggest you do it. Okay. So you should try to kind of emulate or yeah, model the way uh, I'm solving equations. Okay. This is a great format. There's a few other ways, but you should strive to have your work look just like mine. All right. So here we have 21 plus 6n is equal to 1. We have all of our variables to the left, but now we got to get all of our numbers to the right. So we're going to have to scoot that 21 over to the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So how can we do that? Well, we can subtract away the 21 on the left-hand side. But again, whatever we, uh, whatever we do over here, we have to do over here. We're going to add down in a column manner. So positive 21 minus 21 is 0. 6n plus nothing is 6n. Uh, positive 1 minus uh, or plus negative 21 or, or minus tw uh, negative 21 is negative 20. All right, so now we're down to a basic, lovely one-step equation. So how do we solve for n? Well, all we're going to do is divide both sides of the equation by 6. So you can see that work right here. Again, um, doing you know basic um, uh, equations here, basic algebra equations. We call these linear equations. So anything that you're not you know uh, sure about, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that you can review, but if you really need like a good, strong, formal course of instruction, definitely you probably want to go directly to my pre-algebra course. I also teach this in Algebra 1 as well, all depending on what level you're in. Okay, so now we have 6 divided by 6. That's going to give us that 1n or n, and uh, so 6 divided by 6 is 1n. Now, you don't typically write variables like 1n or, you know, you'll just write it as n. But just, you know, as you, you know, uh, uh, just so you're aware, okay, just in case if you forgot, there is really a 1 in front of that. Okay, so we don't write it, but, you know, that's why we're dividing both sides by 6, because 6 divided by 6 will give us that 1 uh, or uh, just n, okay? All right, so now we have negative 20 divided by 6. So if you got this as your answer, okay, I'll still definitely give you a nice little happy face, but I might have to give you like an A minus. I know some of you might be kind of upset about that. You'd be like, hey, what are you talking about, Mr. Math Man? I got this correct. You know, you're what are you, you know, you're you're like a mean math teacher. No, no, no. Listen, anytime you have a fraction, you must fully reduce that fraction. That's not really like an optional thing when it comes to you know what your math teacher wants to see you don't want to give your math teacher something like okay here's my final answer 100 over 200 all right they're going to be you know a little bit angry at you i'm not, not angry but they're going to be a little frustrated they're going to be like hey can't you just give me uh, one half because i want to make sure you simplify your answers simplification is really not like an optional thing in mathematics right so just don't uh, you know, do you, for lack of a better word, don't get lazy, right? Look at your answer. And be like, can I write it simpler? What do I need to do? So here we have negative 20 over 6. We can reduce that to negative 10 thirds. Now, let's say some of you are like, well, I don't know if I got this right. Everything looks good. Well, you can always check your solution. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. This is optional. You don't have to do this, but let's just do it for the fun of it. So I'm saying that number, okay, in this particular problem is negative 10 thirds. Now, assuming we translated um, uh, the word problem into the correct equation, you're saying, oh, I know I did the translation right. Well, let's just go ahead and check this solution into the translation, okay? So we're going to go ahead and replace these ends here with this uh, solution, negative 10 thirds, and we're just going to verify it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So again, I'm replacing the ends with negative 10 thirds, and we'll just do this lovely math here. Okay, so let's go ahead and focus in on this. We have 3 plus negative 10 thirds. Well, I can write that as 3 over 1. So the lowest common denominator is 3, so I'll multiply both the numerator and denominator here by 3. So I get 9 thirds plus negative 10 thirds. And then over here, we can kind of see I'm already doing this. We have negative 10 thirds plus 1. 1 is the same thing as 3 uh, thirds, right? So we'll just go ahead and add these fractions. Uh, 9 thirds plus negative 10 thirds. Okay, the denominators are the same. So when I add the numerator, I get negative 1 third. So this is going to be 7 times negative 1 third. And then over here, I have negative 10 over 3 plus 3 thirds, right? 
So negative 10 plus 3 is, in fact, negative 7 over 3. Okay, so again, I'm kind of, you know, doing this simultaneously. But at this point, if some of you were just kind of checking, you could see when I multiply 7 times this negative 1 third, I'm going to end up with negative 7 thirds. In other words, the left equals the right. So that's validation or verification that, in fact, you did solve this correct and you have the right solution to the equation. And you know the equation is correct because you double, triple checked yourself in terms of uh, translating this because you followed the rule of three. You just didn't read it one time and just, you know, wrote something down and kind of went with it. OK, I've seen this happen maybe about 10, uh, I was going to say 10 million times. That's, of course, impossible. But I've definitely seen it thousands and thousands and thousands of times through the years of teaching math where a student will kind of, you know, uh, look at the word problem and uh, come up with the wrong translation. It was, you know, it could be very close, but they have it wrong. Then they solve this equation, the wrong equation perfectly. And they're like, look, I solved this equation. Uh, can't you give me some credit? Yeah, I'll, 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 we'll kind of have mercy on their grade. I'll give them some points for solving an equation. But the problem is not solve the equation, okay? Uh, it's not solve the wrong equation. It's translate this into the correct equation and then solve that equation. So again, always slow down, you know, force yourself to kind of have uh, kind of a procedure. Anytime you see a math problem, you know, take a deep breath and say, okay, I'm going to read this thing three times no matter how easy I think this is. Okay, so hopefully this problem uh, helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.